Byrne from Hatebreed. I've been a Vader artist since 2002. I started playing drums when I was 13, 14 years old. I tried to play guitar first and uh, I failed miserably. Uh, I don't have like the, the eye finger thing going on. So um, my uncle plays drums. Not so much anymore, but he did at the time. I remember him playing drums since I was born. Um, you know, I knew I wanted to play something. I just wasn't sure what I'd be good at since I had already crapped out on the guitar. So uh, he had his old drum set in the basement and he was like, well, you know, give, give the drums a try. Um, I'm not just going to give you this kit, you know. I'll give you the kit, but I'm not just going to give it to you to bang on and make a lot of noise. Like, I want you to take lessons, see if you like it, see if you understand it. You know, uh, make it worth my while, like really learn what I'm doing, not just, be, don't just be a noise maker, you know. So, uh, yeah, I took a couple lessons, um, I seemed to enjoy it, and the rest is history. He gave me the kit, that was it, it was like an old 68, like Red Sparkle, Ludwig, you know, like plywood kit or whatever they were made out of, man, it was real, real uh, rinky-dink, but it was cool for me. Um, yeah, and that was it, I was off and running. And uh, 1998, uh, was my first stint with Hatebreed. I've had two stints with Hatebreed. Uh, I started in 1998. Mutual friend introduced me to the guys. Uh, I needed a band. They needed a drummer. Um, so I tried out, got the gig, and I was in the band for about a year. We did some band tours and stuff like that all around the, uh, the East Coast and Canada. And um, after about a year, I don't know, we just didn't really click at the time. Me and the guys, we were different, uh, we were a little younger, you know, a little more immature, I guess you would say, and uh, we were just in different places, different people, so I decided to bail, uh, and then I was in another band uh, called All Out War, which was on the same label as Victory Records, or as Hatebreed, Victory Records at the time, and um, I did that for a couple years, and that fizzled out, and at the time, again, it all came back around, Hatebreed had lost their current drummer, they fired him, or whatever, uh, once again, I didn't have a band, so, uh, we kind of worked our stuff out. Um, they brought me on to do, I kind of filled in at first, I did the album Perseverance in 2002. And um, and that was kind of it, we hashed out our differences and you know, I went on tour and that was it, never looked back. I was going to school at the time to be a teacher. I was kind of filling up my downtime not being in a band, uh, being a, working on a teaching degree. So I was like three months away from being a teacher and I went on tour and never looked back. And I'm still not a teacher. I have not gone back to school yet, but you know the band thing has worked out. I'm blessed to be able to play music for a living, and uh, I'm real happy doing it. Using these badass Vader sticks right here. I use the Vader 5B wood tip uh, drumstick. Um, I pretty much used 5Bs uh, for as long as I've been playing drums. They're like the average weight stick. Um, for me, I've, I've messed around with heavier sticks and lighter sticks, and I always come back to the five Bs. They're like the middle of the road. Um, they just feel really good. Uh, you're not overworking. It's not so light and thin that it's airy and you're pushing through it. Yet again, it's not so heavy that you're just blowing out your forearms and your wrists. Because uh, Hatebreed is such a, a fast, it's like fast endurance music, you know. So there's a lot of like, you know, wrist and fingers going on. So this uh, this weight stick is, is perfect for what I do. In, Hate breed um, for the faster stuff as well as like moving around uh, all over the kit with the fills and whatnot. I uh, use the wood tip because uh, there's not there was never a lot of ride work, ride symbol work in hate breed. Um, I've always found that uh, I have a ride symbol, I use it home, I mess around and stuff like that, but hate breed never really needed a ride symbol. It's all loud hi hat and crashes and stuff like that. Uh, I always found that the, uh, the nylon tip always sounded a little better on the ride, it was a little more pingy. Um, which I liked, you know, when you're playing the ride, you want it really pronounced, and I found that that nylon tip really brought out the pinginess of the ride. Um, since I'm not using a ride with Hate Breed, um, sometimes the nylon tip, you know, if you're if you're crashing around a lot, they tend to pop off. So I didn't want to run into problems like that, so I just always stuck with the wood tip. Um, you know, they can really take a beating. Sometimes you have, I've never had this problem, but I know like, uh, when I was younger, I'd find that the wood tip would kind of like uh, start to whittle away and the, and the end of the stick would get thinner. That doesn't happen with these Vader sticks. And I've always found that uh, they, they don't really break either. Vader, the quality of the Vader stick is, is pretty unreal actually, uh, especially playing in Hatebreed. It's so hard and heavy-handed 
uh, I rarely break sticks. If anything, they'll just whittle down here in the middle. Um, but I never whittle off the tip. They'll just whittle down a little bit, and that was that's it. You know, then they kind of become something to throw out to the to the fans for a good keepsake from the show. But they never break. Very durable. One of my biggest influences for heavy metal has always been Dave Lombardo, Slayer. He, he's it, as far as I'm concerned. Everybody who's anybody in heavy metal uh, after Slayer, they all got it from him. You know, uh, he has this great. I mean, he's a thrash metal drummer, but he has this great punk rock approach, and I try to take a lot of that uh, with my own playing. You know, a lot of his stuff is. He doesn't regurgitate what he does on record. A lot of it is just improv, his fills and stuff like that. Like whatever he's feeling that show, that's what he does. I try to take that same approach to my playing. You know, I like every show to be different. Um, and I think it's, it's cool for the fans too. You know, if they see the same thing over and over and over again, it's gonna be boring. So I try to give them a little something different every live show. Uh, outside of heavy metal, one of my favorite drummers is David Garibaldi from Tower of Power. Great punk drummer. I love the funk. There's uh, the best, I think, funk music produces the best drummers in music. Uh, really tasty stuff, real groove oriented stuff. Um, and that's another thing I've really soaked myself in over the years being a drummer. I try to pick up a lot of little things from funk drummers technique, uh, feel, things like that. Um, it, it's amazing how you can take that type of music, like hints from that type of music, and apply it to heavy metal. It's really cool. I mean, uh, you can really develop a deep pocket, a deep backbeat, and an overall deep groove. We're currently on the Rockstar Energy Mayhem tour for uh, this, the entire summer. It's really cool. It's like a traveling festival tour throughout the U.S. Um, it's like a heavy metal circus. Uh, we got Corn out here, and Rob Zombie, Us, Lamb of God, Five Finger Death Punch, all these huge, great bands, Chimera, Shadows Fall. Um, and uh, this is like the premier tour of the summer. You know, there was Ozfest a couple years ago. Now it's the Mayhem tour, and it's really, it really like modeled off a lot of the uh, the festival tours or the festivals that each country has over in Europe. They're these monster like uh, you know three day festival shows that have the biggest bands. Everyone from Metallica to Slayer to uh, you know punk rock bands like Agnostic Front and Seven Seconds and older stuff, newer stuff. Um, and you're playing to like 65,000 people over there, you know. Um, over here it's very similar and it's cool that the U.S. has something like this to offer. They've been doing these things in Europe forever. You know, it's like a summertime staple in the touring industry. You go over to Europe and you just bounce around all the countries um, and you play these great festivals, like I said, like 65,000 65, people, 100,000 people. And they're starting to get that over here now. Um, you know, you could play these, these bigger amphitheaters or arenas in, in the States anywhere from 14,000 to like 60,000 people. So it's cool that, um, you know, all these different styles of music can come together and, and be one big package for all the heavy metal fans out there. You know, it's like the one summer, summertime extravaganza. Some of the crazier crowds we've had, um, you know, there's a lot of crowd surfing and stage diving and all that good stuff. And, it's not uncommon uh, at these festival shows to, uh, you know, there's the pit in front of the stage and everything, you know, girls are on top of guys' shoulders and stuff like that, and then dudes will crowd surf, and then every now and again you'll see a wheelchair with a guy in it propped up over the crowd, and he starts getting passed around, and uh, that's pretty cool that, you know, someone, someone in a wheelchair can still crowd surf. Hey, it's uh, Matt Byrne from Hatebreed. Thanks for checking out this clip. Um, Want to give a little plug to Vader Sticks. I think they're the best sticks in the business. I've been using them for almost 10 years now, and uh, I wouldn't use anything else. They're the most durable and the most comfortable sticks I've ever used in my whole drumming career, and I recommend them to anybody and everybody out there. Fighting to succeed, built to endure what this world throws at me.